welcome. I'm Ijeoma Onyato. Tonight, restructuring of Nigeria takes center stage at summit by Igbo Social Cultural Group, Ahanez Ndibo. Region seeks new constitution for Nigeria. Governors of Kaduna and Bayelsa states weigh in on the call for true federalism, say plan will ensure stability of the nation as a coalition of northern group caution region's leaders on proposal. Former PDP spokesperson Ulisa Metu collapses in court during trial in the case of alleged money laundering in Abuja as judge tackles prosecution and defense lawyers. And U.S. vows strongest sanctions ever imposed on Iran, says new measures will leave country economically paralyzed. On business news tonight, Nigeria's economy maintains strong growth despite 0.16% decline in the first quarter of 2018. On sports news, excitement galore at Channel's International Kids Cup on day one with amazing displays of skills and technical ability from participating schools. To advocate the re-engineering of Nigeria's borders and border policies to effectively deal with communal clashes, smuggling and other criminal activities. Tonight in Nigeria's southeast region, where the Igbo social cultural group Ohanez Ndibo raised questions on the current structure of the country and what the future holds. Leaders of the organization say a review of Nigeria's democratic structure and the enthronement of the principles of equity and fairness will help the country achieve all round development and solve its political and economic challenges. This call is part of the communique read at the Ohanez Ndibo World Summit in Oka, the Anambra State Capital where the leaders also proposed a six-year term for the president, a rotational presidency, five vice presidential seats for equal representation, and resource control by states. The Alex Ekweme Square in Oka Anambra State is the venue for the Ohanese Indigo Worldwide Summit. Leaders of various categories from the southeast region of the country, prominent sons and daughters of the soil, and other indigents are here to make known their stance on arguably one of the most debated issues in national discourse, restructuring. Elder statesmen and leaders from other parts of the country are also here to show solidarity to the cause. <laughs> For the Igbo people who believe they have a great heritage in the history of Nigeria, their aspiration is for a balanced federation. In the past 58 years, Ndibo have worked tirelessly with their fellow Nigerians to lay the foundations for a better federation and a more perfect union. And today, we have gathered to dream a balanced federation into existence for Nigeria and Nigerians. The reason for this position is to ensure an equitable and fair nation, as detailed in a 10-sectioned paper, demanding changes from the current structure. The demand for a restructured Nigeria that guarantees security of life and property, freedom and liberty, equity, justice and development has a unique significance. No other ethnic group has a greater stake in the Nigerian project than Ndibo, by virtue of tens of millions of Ndibo who live and invest everywhere in Nigeria outside Ibo land. The president of the Igbo Social Cultural Body takes to the podium to summarize the recommendations of the paper. for me to go into the whole gamut of what he has said. But some dissatisfied people suspected to be IPOB members cause stare as they stage a walkout in a show of disapproval. But the meeting is quickly put back on track as lawmakers of the Igbo extraction move a motion for the adoption of the recommendations. I'm done by my colleagues from the Southeast in the National Assembly and State Assemblies in adopting the position of Ndibo on the structuring. Let me add that we're not alone. We have people from other parts of Nigeria who have seen the reason and the need 
for us to reflect on the journey so far and be able to adjust our movement to enable us to arrive at our destination. Leaders from other parts of a country commend the recommendations of the Indigo paper on restructuring. It is now for the rest of Nigeria to look at this, examine them and see which ones are really good to be adopted for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We in Afghanistan reached a point to one lesson in because of restructuring. With this summit, the Igbo people make their stance for transfer of more power to the regions and states of a country as a way of ensuring the journey together as a nation stands the test of time. While the discussion on the structuring went on in the southeast, a similar dialogue also went on the way in the north with the governors of Bayasa and Kaduna states at the center of it. The Kaduna State Governor Nasir El Rafai believes that if implemented by the federal government, this committee's recommendation on the issue will not only ensure true federalism, but will also ensure justice and equity for all. For his Bayelsa State counterpart, the restructuring of the country is the way to put Nigeria on the path of stability and growth. Party lines, leaders of our country need to come together reason together, work together for the good of our country. And that is why I'm here uh, to discuss issues pertaining to restructuring and the future of our country as a united, stable, prosperous nation where all Nigerians uh, have a sense of belonging, a nation founded on fairness and justice, a nation that aspires to be one of the greatest on the face of the earth. We have the potentials for that. There are many aspects of our federation that needs to be tweaked, to be improved, and uh, those have been reflected in our report. Uh, I welcome the support we received from uh, Governor Seria Dixon from day one. He crossed party lines and refused to take the attitude that if you're in opposition, everything done by the other party must be wrong. He, 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 he had good uh, uh, complimentary statements about the work we honestly try to do in the overall interest of Nigeria. And uh, we, ha we are talking to continue to advocate to lobby our colleagues uh, in the Governor's Forum, to lobby other political leaders, to advance this, the work of uh, this committee so that we have a more balanced federation that will be fair and just to everyone. But the idea of restructuring as currently being discussed does not seem to sit well with a coalition of some northern groups. The group is recommending what it calls a multi-purpose committee to embark on a massive campaign and enlightenment of all northerners in preparation for the national debate on restructuring. In a communique read by the coalition spokesperson Abdulaziz Sulaiman at the end of its two-day summit also held in Kaduna State, the group cautioned leaders from the region not to settle for any plan that placed the region at a disadvantaged position. Having undertaken a thorough analysis of the position of the North and the dangers of hoodwinking the communities onto a flight without knowing the without actually knowing the destination the summit hereby frowns at the mistake about to be committed by the present crop of northern political leaders in accepting a proposal that could mortgage the region's collective interest and its future the summit states that the seeming endorsement by some northern leaders of a brand of restructuring that clearly places the region at a disadvantage is unacceptable and must be discontinued. Away from the restructuring debate, Nigeria cannot survive the spirit of killings in the country if they are allowed to continue. 
The Catholic Archbishop of Sokoto, Matthew Kuka, made this point today at the River State Anniversary Democracy Lecture held in Port Harcourt. The state governor, Nyesom Wike, also believes that the level of intimidation in the system stands in the way of democracy. Our correspondent, Emmanuel Ire, reports. Democracy in Nigeria, still many rivers to cross. That's the theme of this third anniversary lecture, organized by the River State Government as part of activities to mark its three years in office. Democracy in Nigeria, still many rivers to cross. It appears to be a full house, with traditional rulers, government officials and political leaders gracing the occasion. My Lord, His Great Bishop, Dr. Matthew Hassan Kuka. The Catholic Bishop of Sokoto, Matthew Kuka, looks comfortable with the topic as he explains that Nigeria and African nations still permit authoritarianism in the name of democracy. In many parts of Africa, democracy at the national level is glorified authoritarianism. People can go to vote, but the opposition does not hope to win. All right? The police can exist, but they know that they are answerable to only one person. The army will exist, but the army knows that it does, it's not responsible for the whole country. It's responsible for what the big man wants. For the energy of youth. The energy of youth. That's part of what is killing us today. We want the young people of this country to take over. My generation is gone. I tell you this, my generation is gone. My generation cannot save this country. And we want this country saved. For the state governor, as long as all arms of government and institutions are not allowed to thrive, the national democracy will continue to limp. The system we're oppressing has so much intimidated the judiciary. As I speak to you now, the stimulated by the judiciary, you have the stimulated by the INEC. Now, you, you want us to be patient, where you know if tomorrow you lose election and you have confidence in the judiciary, and that when you go to court, justice will be done. In the end, a major takeaway from the event is that credible processes of election and the commitment of political leaders to the citizens' welfare remain the hallmarks of true democracy. Emmanuel Ewe, Channel Television News. To security matters now, it's the end of the road for two out of the four suspected leaders of the criminal gang that carried out the deadly offer bank robbery last month. Hunle Ogunleye, also known as Arrow, and Michael Adiku were arrested at separate locations in Kwara State, where they allegedly carried out the robbery on April the 5th, leaving many dead. They were among the four men the police declared wanted on May the 4th, after labeling them the principal suspects in the robbery. The police force public relations officer, Jimo Moshud, said in a statement on Monday that Ogunleye was arrested on Sunday, while Adiku was arrested two weeks ago. According to the statement, Adiku, a native of Upper LGA in Benue State, is a dismissed police corporal and an ex-convict. Their arrest brings to 22 the number of suspects the police have arrested in connection with the bank robbery. In part two, after the break, trouble for the ruling All Progressives Congress as more states hold parallel congresses in parts of the country. That's in a moment. Please stay with us.